leading off a controversial anti-Obama billboard in Iowa has been papered over after stirring up widespread outright outrage inside and outside the Tea Party. The billboard, an invention of the Tea Party that shows President Obama sandwich between Adolf Hitler and Vladimir Lenin, read, quote, radical leaders prey on the fearful and naive. Some might say they were referring to themselves. The Tea Party's Iowa State coordinator says the sign is not disrespectful, but as I mentioned, other Tea Partiers disagree. Everything that he has done as far as campaigning and, and taking power is lockstep with what Adolf Hitler did back in the day. I just think it's a line we don't need to cross. It really does an injustice to the people who suffered and died under Stalin and Adolf Hitler. And making that comparison is not really fair because right now we do have a free and democratic society and we can choose to vote people in and out and people aren't dying. Some good points, wouldn't you say? This comes just one day after the NAACP passed a resolution that condemns racism within the Tea Party movement. Here to mix it up is our panel senior advisor for the New Democrat Network, Alicia Menendez, and conservative talk radio host Martha Zoller. Zoller like dollar, she likes to tell us when, we, when it's time to figure out how to get Martha's <laughs> name said properly. Um, how do you deal with the issue of some very valid concerns and issues that exist inside of the Tea Party and some very invalid, in my opinion, and very ineffective? and distracting, if not destructive, messengers uh, delivering what may well be a valid message. Well, it was a stupid billboard. I mean, look, I have a lot of problems with President Obama, and I think he leans towards the, uh, uh, leans, I wouldn't call him a socialist, but he is a big government liberal, that's for sure. I think it was a bad idea to do that. And you're right, you can't compare what he's done to what Hitler or Lenin did. So I think it was a dumb idea. It was the Iowa Tea Party. It doesn't represent the many of thousands of Tea Parties that are across the country. And it comes with really bad timing, really bad timing. Yeah, no, I have to completely agree. And I also think, listen, and this is unfair to the people in the Tea Party who have legitimate complaints who are expressing some of the anger that we've talked about. We're seeing the same thing with some of the more racist elements of the Tea Party. They undermine the entire movement. So how do you deal with that? Because we, we actually need their energy, Martha, when you think about it. We need people who understand how unfair and how unjust our government's function is, whether you call yourself a conservative or a liberal or a progressive or I don't care. Call yourself whatever you want. But we, uh, you don't, you, whatever well, you call it, so you can see how unfair it is. And their energy goes to that unfairness, but then manifests itself in really stupid or destructive ways. At least it appears to, uh, by virtue of billboards like this. How do you, how do you keep the good and get rid of the bad? Well, you do what we did or what was done with this. The outrage was there. The billboard is down. It's no different than saying because of what the new Black Panthers did uh, in polling places in 2008 that everyone in the civil rights movement is is bad. You can't make that that sweeping uh, justification there. So that's what you have to do. You have to rise up against it. I know when I participated in the 9-12 march last year, when people saw signs that were inappropriate, the people around them said, take those down. This isn't what we're about. And there were very few of those signs but yeah. that's what was picked up and that's what you have to realize is that there, when, when you're going out with a TV camera you're not looking for what is representative of most of the people there you're looking for what is the shocking factor and I don't mean you personally but no, in no, general. you're right so you're looking got for to be on again. top of that yeah he could listen you're looking for the, the news the fight for economic justice is a valid fight that needs as many warriors as possible we can't mix up the fight for economic justice with whatever's pissing somebody off that day or whether they feel radiant, whatever they eat, it's That's crazy. Right. So, but economic justice cannot be taken from us because we're distracted by these things either. Uh, new pressure uh, being applied now uh, next here uh, when it comes to today, the issue of the State Department and their investigations <laughs> of an alleged link between BP and the release of the Lockerbie bomber. Several Democratic senators accusing BP of helping secure the release of the terrorist. Al Megrahi, of course, we discussed this yesterday, to help grease the wheels for an oil deal with Libya that could be worth up to $20 billion for BP. Take a listen. It's almost too disgusting to fathom that BP had a possible role in securing the release of the Lockerbie terrorists in return for an oil drilling deal with Libya. It can be described in two words blood money if that's secretary of state hillary clinton says she's looking into the accusations alicia 
I mean, this is an issue of massive national security. If we don't find out this relationship, if we just sort of allow this to fly under the radar, as some have suggested that we're supposed to do, then you send a message to terrorists across the globe that they can get away with murder and that that's perfectly acceptable. And any money, if this only is if there's action, upside for a corporation, only if there's upside for a corporation. And the other point I think that's important to make here is not all corporations are bad. But exactly. when you have really bad players like this, they make it hard for corporations that are trying to play by the rules to not have to cut corners to keep up. With I them. almost feel like I could have the same conversation of corporations, Martha, that I have about the Tea Party. Because that we seem to be not be able to distinguish between groups and, uh, and companies that do to actually try to create value as a group and those that are thieves and manipulators and weasels. Uh, but at the end of the day, what recourse would you advise our government, our people, when it comes to the issue of indulging the release of a terrorist in order to get oil rights in the Gulf of Sidra? Well, he's been, so I don't know that there's anything that we can do. We can certainly put some pressure on Libya. How about freedom muffins? I, 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 how about freedom there. muffins? But also... But also, uh, we've got freedom muffins. Come on, freedom muffins. Between <laughs> Tony also, Hayward, the Gulf of Mexico, I say we go freedom muffin. No? I bake then muffins. I will bake your freedom muffins. I'll, I'll, I'll let you finish, Martha. I'm being That's rude. Right. I'm sorry. That's all right. No, you're not rude. You're funny. That's good. We need a sense of humor because there's enough bad stuff out there, that's for sure. But, BP, if they did present this letter, which it appears that they said, well, we said we thought he should be released, but we didn't push for it. BP, when we know how, how important BP is to the economy of Great Britain, to the pensioners and all of that. BP has carries weight with what they say, and they need to be held accountable for this. Yeah, like I said the other day with uh, friends like BP. With the Freedom Muffins. Yeah, well, well with friends like BP, who needs enemies? That'll be the slogan on the back of our package of Freedom Muffins. Uh, <laughs> finally, uh, well, who knows? I don't know. We'll sell it on the Internet. It'll be fun. Finally, good news for Bono, Cher, and anyone else who's ever dropped an F-bomb on live television. A federal appeals court ruled that an FCC policy meant to keep indecent language off the air actually violates free speech rights. The policy bans, quote, patently offensive references to sex and excrement could in fact lead to fines for using just a single curse word but here's the problem with the banning of references to sex and excrement it does not specify what those words are you remember george carlin's seven words that was very specific this lacks that specificity which led the courts to toss it the fcc could appeal or write seven words for instance in some more specific guidelines martha does this mean late nights about to get a little more colorful I think it could, but here's the problem with the First Amendment, whether it's about speech or it's about religion. It seems like the courts, whether it's the Second Circuit or the Supreme Court, they seem to want to do these individual decisions. And you just can't, you don't know, it's a minefield. You don't know what's right and what's wrong. So, yes, you're going to see the envelope get pushed, not, not that it hasn't already been pushed. And we've got to really uh, watch this. I think this is a bad idea. But, again, I don't want to limit speech. Sure. Uh, I'm a, I make my living through free speech. So you've got to be very careful here it's a minefield how do you i think martha hit the real the right nail on the right head there which is the inconsistency of the policy making in general when it comes to this issue there is inconsistency but i think part of what they're trying to deal with here is where broadcast television falls in the realm of media now that you have cable news with more viewers now that you have the, the internet. internet not being policed we're basically saying broadcast tv you're not so special anymore and you don't need your own set of rules so congratulations to you and your freedom muffins because it means you've arrived okay well well, we're cable, so we arrived a while ago. <laughs> Talk to Brian Williams. He's arrived. Yeah, exactly. Now, hey, now Brian, up. it's going to be the most profane evening newscast in America. <laughs> I doubt it. I think uh, yeah, he's, he's too much jump. of a gentleman. He wouldn't. He'll, you know, I'm going I'm to be fired now, Martha. Uh, a pleasure to see both of you. No, thank don't you. Do that. <laughs> All right, thank you, Martha. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break here. We're back. Still ahead, some busted.